the basement of La Penta. This is WICR. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a very special production alongside Joe D., who I call the soccer expert. If you've heard me before, you will know how many times I've mentioned him when I'm doing my soccer stuff. Jersey Joe and Joe D. tagging along, doing our very own soccer show. Joe D., it's very honoring to me to have a legend in the studio again. A legend? Wow. You are being way, way too kind on this chilly afternoon, Jersey. Oh, you can say chilly again, but let's heat it up a little bit and get into the English Premier League now. I've enjoyed watching the Premier League so long, and I kind of like it, Jody, because I've kind of approached every show I've done from a new soccer fan's perspective. So I'm kind of going into everything I'm learning. You know everything. You go, you're kind of my Come go on. guy to answer questions. Take it easy now. Right, I don't know. Right. I don't know everything. You know a lot, though, Jody. Like you said to me yourself, Jody has the answers, and you will have the answers to us this afternoon. Let's kick it off, though, going over the top. A three. We all understand that right now Chelsea is just at a different level than everyone else. Currently in first with 59 points. Jody, I mean, we saw them play the other day against Everton. Another very control win where they were in control. What did you see in that win the other day? Well, Jersey, a one nothing defeat by Chelsea in that in that game. And quite frankly, their dominance at home is really what what sticks out. Now still unbeaten. At home, which is very impressive. 11 wins, only one tie. And uh, I was impressed, but there is some, there are some things that I am concerned about. Now, let me ask you this, because we talk about this a lot. Chelsea, to me, I mean, they have phenomenal players. I mean, Eden Hazard is terrific. Diego Costa is one of the best scorers in the Premier League. They just have a very good roster. Does Manchester City have more talent than Chelsea? but it's managers that kind of set these clubs apart. Is it is it the talent that doesn't live up to it for City, or is Chelsea just a much better drilled club? I think in this case, the managers have a huge role okay. in the team's success, and we've seen Mourinho jump from club to club and be successful, and he, do, he just is able to get every ounce of juice out of all of his players, and it's absolutely it's astonishing, and it's impressive that every year it just seems that his clubs – are at a top tier level, whether being being a, at a fitness level or just skill set level, they're always at the top. Whereas I see in Man City, you know, they lose a few players and right away we see a drop off. And we saw that when uh, Yaya Torre left yeah, for the uh, African Af- Cup of Nations. Exactly. So we saw that right away. Meanwhile, you have Chelsea who loses their top striker in Diego Costa, who was suspended, yet they're still able to maintain their their form. Their stride, and I think you really need to give a ton of credit to Jose Mourinho, who just drills these guys every single day. I completely agree with you. I mean, I think he just sets a different tempo. I mean, just tactically what he does there. We saw the other day Eden Hazard sign the extension, which can only be good for them. I mean, you talk about a guy, and he challenged Hazard to become the next Messi. I think he's capable of it. I mean, you watch him with the ball. He's incredibly, he moves so well, he sets up guys so well. When you look at the numbers of how he creates chances for his teammates, how how physical he is, and how much of a problem he is for opponents, Hazard's one of the best players in the world. I mean, he he definitely is a top tier player. Can he reach that messy level? That's a yeah. That's that's a that is a very difficult. Scale, you know, not, I don't, I don't think many players will ever reach that. No, you know, I agree. Him, with you him there. and him and Ronaldo are just on a completely different, you know, completely different planet. And it's cool. And I feel so lucky that like we're in the era of the Ronaldo and Messi. And I heard a really interesting point from Ray Hudson, who's just my absolute favorite. Uh, for people who don't know, he's the color one of the commentators for BN Sports. Fantastic. But he kind of made the point where all the great soccer players of all time, you know, they've never really had that rival to be compared to during their area. I mean, you have Pele, who didn't really have a rival to compare to. You had, you had um, so many guys like that. But with Messi and Ronaldo, it's like every single time one does something, the other one's compared. There's rivalry there, and I don't think there's ever we've ever had that before. No, and it's, it's astonishing, and it's wonderful to watch because each week, like you said, we see one of them score two goals, and then the next day the other one has to score three. And it just seems to be a uh, constant trend, although Ronaldo is in a little bit of a slump now. But um, 
we'll wait to get to those two a little bit later on. Oh yeah, but like Let's, you, like oh. like you said with Hazard, it was actually it's actually pretty uh, astonishing. I was reading a article on Pro Soccer Talk, great site to check out some soccer news there, about ha- uh, Hazard and his new deal that'll keep him in, with Chelsea through the summer of 2020. And he he um, as a winger is the most fouled player in the Premier League this year, brought down a whopping 74 times in 25 matches. And, I mean, that just says it all, that he's so dangerous with the ball that the opposing defense will do anything to take him down so he doesn't get into the attacking attacking front of the opposing team. Oh, yeah, I mean, and that's one of the things that when I alluded to, and I, you got the number right on the head, and he's just a, a matchup nightmare. It really is. The final word on Chelsea, though, I want to say, though, is to me, I've kind of felt, I'm look, I'm a Manchester City guy, but... I, I just think they Chelsea would have to have a major collapse not to win the title at this point, right? I mean, they showed both times they played Manchester City it was a draw, but I just don't see it happening. They would really have to collapse, would they not? You know what? I don't think they would have to collapse. It's not it's not that far. Really? Okay. It's not that far. And here's and here's why I say that. In this last game, we saw Chelsea be able to attack and get into Everton's zone very quickly. However, when they were in the bo- around the box, it stalled. The offense stalled, and they allowed for Everton to come back and defend. If they don't continue to be aggressive, other teams will capitalize. So That's I think, fair. you know, the other part of it is, and I understand that both Manchester City and Chelsea are still battling in Champions League, so those are extra games to worry about. But at the same time, I am very interested in, in seeing how Manchester City's newest acquisition comes. Wilfred Bonnie. Yes, how Bonnie comes in and and makes a difference for that team. Well, let's go to Manchester City because that was one of my leading points for them. Is Manchester City? We've seen a very weird season. Got off to the good start, really struggled. I mean, the loss at Stoke uh, to Stoke City was kind of the thing that really spiraled things out of control. Then they were just playing lights at him. We saw Sergio Aguero in the Champions League against Bayern Munich. He was just unstoppable. He had the injury. Vincent Company was out for a while. City kind of had that really rough patch. Now they're getting Yaya Torre and Wilfred Bonney back. How big of an impact is that going to be for City? Will it let them go over the top and kind of take over the Premier League? Well, when you first get a new player, there's always some type of concern: is can this team gel? Can they tra- can it, can it translate onto the field, etc. However, this instance, I think it's a little bit different because of them playing together on the their national of nations, exactly yeah. on their national team, and being that Yaya Torre is in the middle of the field, Bonnie's up front. There is, there is that connection. They're already on the same page. Now, as long as the other players can get on the same page, I think it would be fine. And Manuel Pellegrini, the manager of Manchester City, has already come out and said, you know, he's warned his forwards and said, listen, if you guys aren't going to play at your potential in the way you should be playing, then we, I have no problem giving the Bonnie, Bonnie an opportunity because we know he's talented. And, he, you know, he, he scored nine goals with... Uh, already with Swansea, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, with his with his former club, so he certainly has a goal scoring ability. But forget about Bonnie coming to Manchester City. It's just the fact that Yaya Torres is, is back yeah. and is that big body in the midfield who will definitely get things back and going for Manchester City. I compl- I mean, Tor Yaya is such an important piece. He's so like like we say all the time. The Premier League is so physical, and having a guy like him is makes things so much easier for Sergio Aguero. I think Sergio Aguero, you really have seen, is, I mean, he did score a goal the other day. He's been warming up more, but I think having his presence, yeah, yeah, in the lineup makes things so much easier for Sergio Aguero. Vincent Company is still the little question mark I have. He's really struggled transitioning back from the injury. Now, I'm not worried about it too much because he's shown he's always a very dependable guy, but he struggled picking up yellow cards, fouling people. I think he's not his conditioning might not be there yet, but I definitely think now that the, we've got a week off for the Premier League, I think that that will definitely help him out. If as long as Vincent Company is going to be better there, that will also help them tremendously. That's it for Manchester City. Let's move on to the third place team, Manchester United. Now, are we really comfortable with Manchester United in the third spot? I mean, to me, I think you could really throw in a lot of clubs here. I think for me, 
it's Chelsea and Manchester City above all else. And then the third spot, and other than that, I think it's really a toss-up. What do you think? No question. That number one, two spot could change at the end. But like you said, Manchester City, Chelsea will be there. No questions asked. That third spot now, I could see anybody, any club from Liverpool, Man- uh, Liverpool, Manchester United, Arsenal. You know, Southampton's still up there. Yeah, they're the no one. Kind of everyone's sleeping on. Everyone sleeps on them just because of the mere fact that you know, will they will they be able to hold up? And with lower end, lower tier clubs like that, it's difficult to keep up. But who knows? They they are they will be playing less games than some of those top teams that are still left there because of um, European Cup, Champions League, etc. So that could help them out. But I don't think uh, Manchester United really belongs in this group. And I continue to get frustrated as I watch them and I watch uh, Van Gaal switch the lineup each and every each and every day. And it's very it's very disheartening. And I think the problem is that he doesn't allow. For a uh, for a starting eleven to you know gel and get used to each other, and that's interesting because I always look at this collection of talent from Manchester United, and I I don't know because there's good. Pl- I mean, Robbie Van Persie, Angel De Maria, Wayne Rooney. I mean, there's a, a lot of great players here, but it just seems like they've. It's been such a roller coaster ride for Manchester United. I mean, a lot of draws, some disappointing losses, and I really can't put my finger on one thing as to why. The one thing that I've really been surprised at was Angel de Maria. Now, when he when they kind of made the switch and they got him from Real Madrid, I thought what a big slam dunk move, and it seemed like right away his impact was just you could you could see it easily. But it seems like as of late and as we've gone into the season, he's really struggled finding his way in this lineup. I think he finally picked it up again in their last game. You know, sending in a nice ball that ended up being headed in for a goal against um Burnley this past this uh when was it Thursday uh, I believe Thursday yes Thir- uh Wednesday 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 I think that that helped him out a little bit it's 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 an adjustment jumping from league to league is definitely an adjustment previously being in La Liga now going to EPL it's a very physical game it not, really is not not all players could translate to the physical physicality but the other part of it is I think the players, are, I don't think they're confused, but I think part of the problem is the constant change in the lineup where we see, you know, Wayne Rooney, okay? Wayne Rooney in this last game was playing center defensive mid. I mean, in my mind, Wayne Rooney is a striker. Oh, absolutely. Up front striker, give him the ball, he's going to score. And, you know, I think he's played every position but striker this year. I mean, it's unbelievable. I think that that's a huge concern. But forget about the attacking front. I think their biggest concern is their back four, which which is very, very shaky. I, I'm with you there, and we, we hear it so much. I mean, do people put the blame? I mean, how much blame do you put on Van Gaal here? I mean, in your if you had to assess Louis Van Gaal to this point, and you had to kind of look at where this t- club is going. What what's the outlook? I mean, is it positive? I mean, I don't know. What is it? Right now, I think he's okay. Okay. Just because they're in third place. Yes. Now, if they were to finish, if they finish in third, I think he'll be fine. He'll retain his job. They'll be in Champions League next year, no problem. If they were to drop to fourth, fifth, there there will be question marks. And deservingly so, his, you know, and you think, wow, you know, at that position, they'll probably end up with 70 plus points, maybe close to 80. How can you get rid of a manager? This team has a ton of talent. I mean, you you listed a few players there, but you didn't even mention Falcao. Exactly. You didn't even mention Juan Mata. I mean, they're they're not, they should be phenomenal up front. They should be one of the best attacking teams in the EPL. And unfortunately, we're not seeing it. I'm with you, and a kind of well, we wrap down this Premier League segment. I mean, there's still kind of the clubs that are hanging around that we kind of really had a great. I mean, rough starts for Liverpool and Arsenal, and they've really snuck back up the table. Even Tottenham Hotspur, and we saw this weekend in the uh, last weekend in the North London derby, what an excellent game we had between Arsenal and Tottenham Hotspur. But Jody, out of these clubs, we saw Mario Bellatelli the other day. I know you oh, wanted to talk about that goodness, a little bit. So let's please. start with Mario Bellatelli. You take the floor. You tell me what you want to hear. 
Oh my goodness, I'm tired. I am sick and tired of hearing all the experts scream and yell in praise that Mario Balotelli is back. Ladies and gentlemen, let's relax. Please, please relax. Finally, finally since arriving to Liverpool, Mario Balotelli does what he was bought to do. Score goals. It only took him long enough to do it. It's unbelievable. I cannot get over the craziness that's going on with this. I mean, it's it's it seems like it's been such a weird fit for Mario Bellot. I mean, it kind of reminded me a lot of when Albert Pujols got brought to the went to the Angels, and it took him like a, probably a hundred at bats to hit a home run, and people just kept waiting and waiting and waiting, and it finally happened with Balotelli. I mean. It just seems like at some points, he just fell off the face of the earth. I mean, you couldn't even tell where he was sometimes. And I mean, right away before he even got in, if you saw his facial expressions, he just he just didn't look interested. I mean, and yeah. that's the type of player he is. But I, if I'm a Liverpool fan, I'm excited for the time being. But do not expect this every week. Because the minute he gets his chance to play more than five minutes, because I'm pretty sure that's all he got to play that game... Be ready for the old Balotelli to come back. Be ready for him to not hustle for the ball. Be ready for him to commit ridiculous fouls and get himself in the, getting himself booked early with a yellow card. And just be ready for the frustration to boil over. Well, just like Liverpool fans should be getting ready, we will be getting ready for our next segment when we come back. So stay with us, Jody and Jersey Joe, signing off momentarily. <laughs> 